Just because a movie made a lot of money doesn't mean it's automatically good, and vice versa. Whether they involve alien slug monsters or a mission to blow up the sun, these solid sci-fi flicks didn't deserve to flop. We should be on the fourth or fifth Dread film by now. In fact, we should have a whole Dread universe complete with spin-offs, video games, and theme park rides, but we don't. Instead, we have to make do with two standalone adaptations, 2012's Dread and 1995's Judge Dread. Even though the newer version starring Carl Urban brought in less money, it's more intense, more stylized, and more memorable than its predecessor with Sylvester Stallone. In the massive urban sprawl known as Mega City One, it's the job of the judges to maintain law and order. The streets have been flooded with an addictive drug called Slow-Mo, and cartel kingpin Mama won't rest until she's taken over the entire community of peach trees for good. It's up to Dread and new recruit Cassandra to stop Mama once and for all by acting as judge, jury, and executioner. Mama is not the law. I am the law. Pete Travis's film grossed just $41 million on its $45 million budget, but it has a cult following to this day. If you can't get enough of Carl Urban as Billy Butcher in The Boys, you'll love seeing him go to town in Dread. There was no shortage of praise for Children of Men upon its release in 2006, and yet it grossed just $70 million against its $76 million budget. It may not have had the best marketing campaign, but Alfonso Cuaron's masterpiece is just as impressive all these years later. Children of Men introduces us to the London of 2027, which has become a grungy police state after an 18-year global fertility crisis. Pollution hangs in the air, and armored police patrol the streets as an air of hopelessness envelops the entirely adult population. After nearly being caught in the blast of a terrorist attack, Theo Farron finds himself swept up in an organized effort to protect a refugee woman who may just be the savior of the human race. Clive Owen, Julianne Moore, Chiwetel Ejiofor, and Michael Caine are all at the top of their game in this bleak but thoughtful thriller. With impeccable cinematography and brutal action, Children of Men is quite simply a must-see movie. If you could genetically engineer your child to have entirely perfect traits, would you do it? In the world of Gattaca, the answer is yes, that is, if you want them to be able to have a professional career. Andrew Nichols' 1997 dystopian film asks some difficult questions about technology and fate. Ethan Hawke plays Vincent, a man born outside of the eugenics program who has dreams of a life among the stars. Unfortunately, his invalid genes make him ineligible for space travel, so he enlists the help of a paralyzed former athlete as he lies his way into the ideal job. It can't be that easy, though, as the murder of an administrator at the Gattaca Aerospace Corporation leads investigators on a search for the imposter. By the end of its theatrical run, Nichols' $36 million film had grossed just $12 million at the U.S. box office. Still, it's become warmly regarded as a highlight of 90s sci-fi and a favorite of high school biology teachers everywhere. In 1997, long before he became part of the Marvel machine, director James Gunn worked for another American media empire. Troma Entertainment, the company known for low-budget B-movie hits. Gunn got his first writing credit on Tromeo and Juliet, and it was clearly the work of a young man who had grown up on Night of the Living Dead and Friday the 13th. Nine years later, Gunn channeled all of his genre education into Slither, his first movie in the director's chair. When a meteorite lands in rural Wheelsy, South Carolina, it unleashes a parasite that infects local resident Grant Grant. After the bug light entity assumes control of his mind, it kicks off a chain of events that results in thousands of alien slugs descending on the town. It's up to police chief Bill Party and the citizens of Wheelsy to stop them, along with the hideous monster that Grant has become. My easy going nature is getting sorely tested. Slither is a gory good time, but it only grossed $12 million against its $15 million budget. If you prefer the Toxic Avenger to the actual Avengers, this is the movie for you. David Cronenberg is the undisputed king of unsettling body horror, and his son Brandon has eagerly followed in his footsteps. The younger Cronenberg made his skill behind the camera abundantly clear with his second feature film, The Mind-Bending Possessor. Tasia Voss is a skilled assassin who has her consciousness uploaded into the bodies of strangers when she carries out her hits. After a mission to take out a rich CEO goes sideways, she finds herself in a difficult position as her host begins to fight back. Sadly, Possessor hit theaters in the fall of 2020 as COVID lockdowns continued to restrict the film industry around the world. As a result, it brought in just $911,180 at the box office, a paltry sum for such an ambitious project. The Cronenbergs are no strangers to financial failures. David's classic Videodrome didn't even make half its budget back after all, but it's still a shame that so many people missed out on seeing this trippy thriller on the big screen. 
Possessor shouldn't be missed, and be sure to check out the uncut version if you want a particularly intense experience. Michael Shannon and Jeff Nichols may not be the most famous actor-director duo, but their collaborations have made for some truly captivating cinema. Sadly, none of them have made much of a splash at the box office. After Shotgun Stories and Take Shelter, the pair teamed up a third time for the supernatural drama Midnight Special. Alton is a young boy with extraordinary powers who grew up belonging to a religious cult known as The Ranch. When he and his father Roy escape along with a trusted friend, they find themselves targeted by both The Ranch and the U.S. government, leading them on a wild goose chase from Texas to Florida. Their journey will put them in mortal danger, and it will also bring them closer together than ever before. Midnight Special was praised by the majority of critics, but that didn't stop it from earning just $7.6 million against an $18 million budget. Regardless, it's a memorable watch for fans of Michael Shannon, Jeff Nichols, and sci-fi in general. Just like The Last Voyage of the Demeter could be easily described as Dracula on a boat, director Nasa Hardiman's Sea Fever is essentially the thing on a boat. If you're expecting torrents of gore, though, temper your expectations. This is an understated horror piece that favors measured suspense for better or worse. Siobhan is a PhD student studying with a trawler crew off the Irish coast. When their boat collides with an unidentified mass, it covers part of the hull in a strange slime that proves to be hazardous to humans. It's not long until the crew loses control of the situation, succumbing to both the slime's mysterious danger and the ocean's maddening isolation. Sea fever. Happens. Since Sea Fever was released in April of 2020, it never had much of a chance to break out at the box office, and it earned just $254,911 in theaters. Most people who watched Sea Fever did so in the safety of their own homes, and if you haven't yet, you should do exactly that. Despite being primarily known for grounded dramas like Beau Travail and White Material, French director Claire Denis took her arthouse sensibilities to outer space with her 2018 film High Life. Robert Pattinson plays Monty, a death row inmate who's been sent to a black hole to extract energy and serve his sentence. He and his fellow inmate crew members are also the lab rats for the experiments of Dr. Dibbs, a researcher with a dark past and some bizarre sexual fixations. After a child is born on the ship, it changes the path of Monty's life forever. Pattinson is joined by all-star actors Mia Goth, Andre Benjamin, and Juliette Binoche, but that wasn't enough to keep High Life from grossing just $2.8 million. Despite playing fast and loose with the actual physics of living on the edge of a black hole, Denise's first attempt at science fiction is truly captivating, and hopefully it won't be her last. One year before The Matrix hit theaters and changed sci-fi forever, director Alex Proyas released his own film about a lifelike world that is not exactly as it seems. While Dark City leans more into the realm of neo-noir than pure action, that doesn't make it any less exciting. John Murdoch wakes up in a hotel bathtub with amnesia, but he doesn't have time to gain his bearings. He's told by a mysterious doctor that a group of men is coming after him, and they're going to accuse him of murder. As John evades the strange forces that govern life in the Dark City, he tries to learn exactly who he is, what's going on, and how to save the world. Dark City was soon overshadowed by Neo and his friends, but it still managed to make back its $27 million budget, with just $200,000 to spare. If there's one thing we can count on every day, it's the sun rising in the morning, right? Well, not in Danny Boyle's Sunshine, a sci-fi thriller in which the stakes could not possibly be higher. It's the year 2057 and the sun is going dark. A group of astronauts aboard the Icarus 2 are on a mission to detonate a special bomb designed to reignite our star and bring light back to the solar system. Naturally, it's a perilous mission with billions of lives hanging in the balance, and even if they succeed, not everyone is going to make it back alive. Despite the existentially terrifying subject matter, the imagery and score of Sunshine often feel vast and serene, eerily so. Many sci-fi fans consider it one of the most underappreciated films of its time, considering that it only made back $26 million of its $60 million budget. 